Good, sir. The Advocates Amendment Bill, which seeks to reform the legal system in India, needs effective implementation. With this, I support the bill. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Honorable Member Sri N.K. Praminder. Thank you. Usual guy. Uh, Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chairman, you. sir, for uh, affording me this opportunity to take part in the discussion on a small bill, though it is a small, but it is very important bill as far as the advocates community is concerned. It is Advocates Amendment Bill 2023. Sir, most of the honorable members, especially Jagadim Pyugapal ji, he was making an eloquent speech praising the honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji ke Nedurthme. Wonderful things have been done by means of this legislation. I can't understand what is the spirit and what is the contents of this legislation. What Mr. Jagadam Pugapal ji has imagined or assessed about this legislation also, I'm not sure. Why? Because this is a legislation which is already in existence. Only thing the government is doing is to repeal an obsolete law. Other than nothing is new in this bill. Jagadambika Palji, this everything is a colonial legislation. This itself is a colonial legislation. You are taking a portion of section 36 of the colonial legislation and incorporating it in the Advocates Act. There is nothing is new. No dairy, no revolutionary things was done by the Honorable Prime Minister in having this legislation. Unfortunately, unnecessarily you are praising everything because what the thing in 1961 provision is, the act is there. 1879 Act is also there. So you have to understand that you have to took that portion 1879 Act and incorporated in the 1961 Act and nothing is there only repealing an obsolete law of 1879. That is the thing which is happening. This is the way by which exaggeration is going on in the house regarding so many things which is being done by this government. Sir, my point, I fully support this bill. But I would like to seek some clarifications from the Honorable Law Minister. The number only is the statement of objects and reasons in the bill. It is not so specific. Why? Because you are mentioning that it is only to repeal the obsolete law. But as far as at the same time you are incorporating some provision that is section 36 of the 1879 Act is being incorporated in the Advocates Act of 19. That, that is not there in 1961 Act. You are incorporating that new provision so that that also should come in the statement of objects and reasons. That is a simple observation on the part of the statement of objects and reasons. And another point which I would like to seek the clarification from the Honorable Law Minister is Law Practitioners Act of 1879 was in existence. In order to replace the 1879 Law Legal Practitioners Act in the year 1961, a new act of Advocates Act of 1961 is, in, it is being legislated, it is being made. But unfortunately, sections 1, section 3, and section 13, except all other sections were repealed, these sections were there in the original act of 1879. My question is, why in the year 1961, the legislature, the then legislature, the then parliament, they have avoided this provision, section 36, from the 1961 Act, to my information, or to my understanding, or to my knowledge, because this is nothing to do with the Advocates Act. This is the law, Section 36 of the 1879 Act is relating to the touts. Advocates Act is a law consolidating the rules and regulations regarding the advocate profession. The touts has nothing to do with the advocate profession. That, is, that may be, or that might be the reason by which Section 36 he is not incorporated in the Advocates Act of 1961. So I would like to seek the clarification or the justification for the Honorable Minister how the law of thoughts will come within the purview of Advocates Act of 1961. Maybe that the reason by which it was not incorporated during 1960 when this law was made. So that clarification I am seeking from the Honorable Law Minister. Sir, hello, this is the this is the math, this is the thing which I would like to discuss on the condoms of the bill. Otherwise, the bill is absolutely okay. We fully agree with the bill because obsolete laws have to be repealed from the law books, statute book, and also this incorporating this also nothing harm. But only clarification I am seeking out of the bill is that is how the law of torts 
will be relating to the law of advocates because it is nothing to do with the advocate prof advocate professionist is there but as far as the advocates is concerned it is nothing to do with that so this is the only clarification which i am seeking and regarding the another one, one or two other points which i would like to draw the attention of the honorable law ministries nowadays most of the legislation which is coming for legislation for enactment it is the advocates is being omitted or this uh, the, the role of advocates is being limited by means of the legislation. The government has to take care because strict legal interpretation nowadays it is very difficult. Even the Honorable Supreme Court Judge Chief Justice has already observed that it is very difficult to understand and uh, interpret the verbatim or the legal drafting of the laws made by the parliament. This is the situation. Even the judiciary is not able to have a good interpretation or understanding of the law made by the parliament at the same time. Most of the times we are trying to limit the role of the advocates in the legal proceedings and thereby so many authorities have, in almost all the authorities, I'm not going to cite the examples, all the authorities, the advocates role is being limited. That has to be looked into. That is one of the point, one, one of the issue which I would like to highlight. And another one is regarding, sir, most of the members, the, just, the previous speaker has also spoke about it. Because Kerala so Advocates Act, we, we know that the Advocates Act is meant for the regulating the profession along with this Bar Council is also part and parcel of this act. So we have to keep the welfare of the advocates also. We know the legal profession, we know the, sorry, the medical profession, almost all other professions, internship, allowance and so many other things are there. As far as the junior advocates are concerned, advocates are concerned in Kerala, we have a phrase that there are four stages in a profession of advocates. Sir, one second. Four stages. First stage is the raw junior. There is no case, there is no fees. The second stage is there is case, but there is no fees. In the third stage is there is case as well as fees. And the fourth stage is the super senior stage, thereby there is no case, but fees is there. This is the fourth stage of, of an advocate. In local language, we are saying it. So what my point is that the junior advocates have to be protected by providing some internship or stipend allowance, not less than 25,000 of rupees for getting something has to be done because in house urgency, internship, in so many other things, we are providing such type of after PG degree examination, the medical examination, we are providing all these amenities. Similarly, the junior advocates have to be protected so that they will maintain the profession in the proper way. And there's so many other posts because executive posts in which law degree has to be made compulsory. Sir, my suggestion is as far as the station house officer, a station house officer has to be well aware with the laws, especially the criminal procedure code, Indian penal code and the civil law, they have to be well aware with. But unfortunately, most of the stations, house stations, we know very well that they are not fully aware of this. So as far as the SHO, the minimum qualification, minimum qualification of a state house, state, station house officer should yes. be having a legal degree that is an LLB degree that should be made compulsory for all such type of executive posts and the last point which I would like to highlight is as far as the medical profession you know we have made the, the, the proposal for having a law is there most of the 22 state legislative assemblies have made laws for protecting protecting the safety and security of the medical professionals. Sir, same thing is happening in the case of advocates also. In my, that is from the police forces. In my state, in Kerala, in Trivandrambar, in Kollambar, and in High Court also, so many conflicts are being taken because police is brutally attack, attacking the advocates and the police is interfering into the profession of advocacy profession and no protection is being provided in such a way we have to think of having giving safety and security in the discharging of the profession as an advocate especially from the police forces yes. now series of incidents of violence is being happening in various parts of the country right. that has to be dealt with for which also the government has to think of formulating some legislation so as to protect the interest safety and security of the advocates in discharging the functions as a legal professional or an advocate with these suggestions thank i would you. like to support this bill once again with these clarifications thank you very much sir. thank you all members